Have you ever wondered how closely vaccines are tied into autism? We hear the statistics, we hear the CDC numbers, we hear other people's numbers, but have you really researched it to know for sure? Or Dr. Brian Hooker has. He's from Simpson University and he's gonna tell us all of his research right now. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Hooker. Oh, well, thank you uh, for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Yes, we definitely appreciate you coming on. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience and then after that, tell us what interests you the most about looking into autism and vaccines? Well, um, I, have, I my PhD is in biochemical engineering, and I've done a lot of work in um, assessing science. I've done I've, ha I've had a, a, a quite a varied career. I've I've done uh, work in in molecular genetics for plants, uh, done work in environmental cleanup, but I've also done a lot of statistics and as of late uh, epidemiology. So I'm I'm looking at. Uh, specifically what's what's happening and what's causing the autism epidemic. Exactly, exactly. Now let's go into one of your more recent articles. We have this article, Vaccine Industry Watchdog Obtained CDC Documents. Can you tell us a little bit about this document and what you found in your findings? Sure. Um, I, well, it just, it just to back up a little bit, I got involved in, in this, this whole movement in 2002. And uh, um, it, uh, because uh, I have a, a child who was uh, injured by his infant vaccines and has uh, developed, he's 16 now, he's developed some neurological issues and, you know, struggles on a daily basis. And, and we, you know, when he got vaccinated and when he started to show symptoms, it was very, very obvious to us that there was some problem and the two were connected. Well, sir, if you don't mind me asking, uh, could you tell us what type of problems he had? Well, he is uh, he he has uh, severe language delays. He essentially doesn't have uh, any language, and um, has uh, uh, um, experiences a lot of pain. He has been diagnosed with autism. I don't like to use autism as a diagnosis because there are so many different children and that are presenting different problems that are kind of fall under this umbrella of autism. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it, I, to me, it makes more sense to look at exactly neurologically what's going on. And his big, biggest issue is, or his two biggest issues are language delays as well as extreme sound sensitivity. Okay. Now, sir, uh, moving more, you were going to talk about your, uh, your recent your Oh, recent right, documents. right. Okay. No, I've, I've submitted over 100 FOIA requests to the CDC. And I've also uh, uh, been able to get some information from the CDC via congressional request. And the latest information basically showed that um, when children uh, were exposed to uh, thimerosal, thimerosal is a mercury-containing uh, preservative that's used in vaccines and was used extensively in vaccines uh, uh, in the uh, 1990s and early 2000s, um, but what I saw was that children that received uh, thimerosal in their vaccines, they were essentially exposed to mercury, uh, they were 7.6 times more likely to receive an autism diagnosis than children that did not receive mercury in their first month of life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And not only did we, you know, I, I knew that of this finding, um, it was, it was actually in a data table that was uh, um, uh, received via Freedom of Information Act uh, back in oh, 2005. Uh, but the thing that we recently discovered was that this, this was not just a little known fact. This was not just a number on the paper. The CDC wide knew, and it had been reported at an internal CDC conference, that not only were we seeing ultra high risks of autism in when children were exposed to mercury and vaccines, but we were seeing in general neurological developmental disorders, speech and language delays, as well as uh, what they termed the non-organic sleep disorder. Well, okay. Dr. Hooker, if I could just stop you for a moment to clarify, you're saying that the CDC was aware of the findings that you just mentioned to us there? Absolutely, but there's been no move or no energy to ban mercury and vaccines. In fact, the CDC will say, oh, yes, we phased mercury out of vaccines uh, in the early 2000s, but that's just simply not true. What they did was they took in, uh, mercury out of several vaccines, the hepatitis B, the Haemophilus influenza, and the DTaP vaccine, but then they, they put it in the flu shot, which became a part of the infant schedule and was also recommended for 
pregnant women in any trimester. So pregnant women are actually exposed to 25 micrograms of mercury wow. when, they, when they follow the CDC's recommendation and they get their flu shot. Meanwhile, they're telling pregnant women to avoid mercury and other things, you know, but you can eat, you can have your, uh, your mercury in your flu shot, which is very, uh, very troubling. So let's just take a moment and clarify, uh, you know, what we're talking about here. So you're saying that vaccines, uh, whether they be uh, the, the shots that don't have them supposedly by the CDC or your flu shot, these things have mercury, the marisol, and you're saying that this is, you know, at least one of the causes or a potential cause of autism. Right, right. In other information that I've uncovered, the CDC actually did a study on prenatal uh, uh, thimerosal exposure and autism risk. This study came out. It was uh, done by a gentleman by the name of Christopher Price, and it was published in Pediatrics in 2010. And in that particular study, they said not only was thimerosal safe for pregnant women, is this mercury-containing preservative, but it was also uh, preventative against autism. So they were saying that mercury was preventative against autism. And that, you know, that's, that's a preposterous result. Mm -hmm. A neurotoxin like mercury does not prevent neurological issues from occurring. Just, it, it just makes absolutely no sense. And uh, so I got the background information. I wanted to reanalyze the price study uh, and I have reanalyzed the price study. And, and what I found and what the CDC actually knew in 2008, two years before, was that women that got the uh, flu shot uh, during pregnancy were eight, actually, uh, yeah, 8.7 times more likely to have a child that regresses into autism spectrum disorder. Mm -hmm. And they never, they buried that result. It was an out and out fraud. They, they, if you look at the background report that I was able to obtain uh, via congressional request, and you see that information, it never saw the light of day. They, they simply ignored that particular number mm -hmm. and they used dubious statistics in order to dismiss the risk, okay? But in fact, um, based on their own study and based on their own statistics and epidemiology, those, those infants that were exposed to thimerosal in utero are eight times more likely to regress into autism. That's very unfortunate, doctor. Now we're talking about the, uh, the vaccines affecting the children in the womb. Let's talk about the children outside the womb, you know, because you get mm -hmm. out of the womb, you have to go to school, you have to get several shots. And what, do you, what does your research tell you from the kids who get the series of shots, whether they be the hepatitis B, uh, whatever type of shots, the booster shots, uh, what type of information do you have on that? Well, essentially, um, what the CDC has found and, and what I've uncovered, you know, this is, you, you know, I want to be very specific because there are two analyses here. There are the CDC's analyses that they basically covered up, and then there's my reanalysis of their same data. I've, I've been able for several studies to get the original data sets and reanalyze them uh, uh, using what I think are much more sound, much more fair epidemiology techniques. But even in the CDC's admission, um, boys that, that received the full amount of thimerosal or, or received, a, let, let's put it this way, higher levels of thimerosal in their infant shots mm -hmm. um, are much more likely to um, have ticks. And this is by the CDC's own admission. But, you know, and, and yet it's still in flu shots. It's still the, the boys will receive a flu shot in their, in their first six months of life, then another flu shot by the time they're 18 months of life. So that's 50 micrograms of mercury. But the CDC clearly has shown and has buried a result that boys that get the Marisol are much more likely to get ticks. Now, when I took that data and reanalyzed it, okay, and I used methods that the CDC will use dubious methods uh, so they cut down the level of variability of thimerosal exposure between their cases and controls. Uh, when I reanalyzed it, what I saw was not only uh, were individuals much more likely to get ticks, but they were much more likely to be language delayed, speech delayed, and also have lower IQs. Wow. Okay. And these are children that didn't receive an autism diagnosis. These are children that we would call, you know, in the autism community, neurotypical. Uh, but we're still seeing that, you know, because of this exposure, we are dumbing down our children. 
Exactly. Now, Doctor, let me ask you this, because we're talking about this autism thing, and there are plenty of people out there watching right now. They say, hey, you know, I've given my children shots. You know, they have no symptoms. What would you say to parents who have that viewpoint? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting. In, in a statistical study, we want to get as, min, as many data points as possible. We want as much data as we can possibly get our hands on. So we need many, uh, we, we evaluate many, many individuals. When I, when I do a statistical study, I wanna make sure that um, I have 10,000 controls. Now, if, you know, if your child received infant vaccines that contain mercury or received other infant vaccines, and I'm not saying that mercury is the only problem, it is not. Mm -hmm. But um, if your re child received all their shots and is not showing neurological issues, that's great, okay? But statistically, we're seeing a much higher likelihood that they would have gotten those. And also that there are, you know, and you also, you also have to bear in mind that, that the neurological issues may appear over time, okay? So a child that may appear perfectly normal that received mercury in their vaccines well, you don't know what their trajectory would have been if they had not, okay? But because we're seeing in general an overall lowering of the IQ, okay? So first of all, you may think your child is fine, but you don't know how they would have performed if they had not received mercury in their shots, okay? And number two, you, you can't look at an N of one. You can't look at a statistical study. You know, in my house, if I do a statistical study, then uh, vaccines, uh, vac vaccines had an apparent cause to my son's neurological issues, mm -hmm. okay? You, when you do an actual study, we need to look on a population basis and we need to be able to protect all children, okay? Not just those children that supposedly didn't react to their vaccines, but we're responsible for the entire society. And now we're seeing statistically significant solid results that show that these vaccinations, especially those that contain mercury, are wreaking havoc to our, uh, to our children's neurological systems, it, 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 as well as their immune systems. Yeah, we saw Mrs. Boyle of the CDC, she was being grilled and a gentleman asked her, he said, you know, the children in Africa really didn't have any cases of autism before we started vaccinating them. Do you have any response to that? And she really did not. But while we're talking about the topic of autism, sir, in, you said it's a different thing, many different things, a cocktail of things. Are there anything else that people need to be aware of besides thimerosal? I, I would say yes. I, I think that at, at this point, there are too many vaccines that children receive uh, too young. If you look at the, the current vaccination schedule, children are receiving 49 different vaccinations by the time they reach age six. That's just 49 individual needle sticks, okay? Many of those needle sticks are for multiple antigens, you, you know, like the MMR, it, it has, it, it supposedly protects against measles, mumps, and rubella. But the CDC has never tested the safety of the vaccination schedule. They, the, the study that they refuse to do is the outcomes and the health effects of vaccinated versus unvaccinated children. And my contention is if you have not done the study to show that these vaccines are safe, then there's no way that I'm going to put that in my body or my child's body. Okay? Exactly, exactly. So no, those we, are very good know, points. No, please yeah, continue. Otherwise, we're just a part of a grand experiment to see what happens. And, and, you know, quite frankly, I'm not gonna put my family through a grand experiment. Exactly, you don't wanna just say, well, let's see what happens when you're dealing with something that could potentially damage yourself or your child. Now, doctor, our time is short. I just wanna get your comments on some recent mainstream news articles. We have this one from CNN. Autism rates now one in 68 in US children, reports the wow. CDC. Okay, and I and I would I would uh, venture to say that's an underestimate. If, wow. if you, you say at, you say one in sixty eight is an underestimate. I would say I would say that the numbers are probably more like one in twenty nine, one in thirty. Okay, oh, yeah. um, because number one, that the the study that the CDC did was only eleven states. Okay, and within those eleven states, they they left out states that are known to have high aut autism incidence, like New Jersey. Okay. And, and so we only got a very, very small sampling. This is not a nationwide study. This is a study of CDC centers that happen to be in 11 states, okay? And when you look at individuals that, that have an autism diagnosis or an autism spectrum disorder diagnosis, um, they, and apparently they, they also limited their study to children that have low IQs. 
Okay, autism in autism spectrum disorder does not necessarily mean low IQ. It, it could mean that they have extreme sensory issues, but they have a normal or even above average or even a very, very high IQ. Okay, okay. so they've missed uh, cohorts. They are individuals. There, there is no doubt in my mind that this is a much more serious epidemic. And, and the thing that is even more compelling is why in the 1970s and the 1980s did we have autism rates that were one in 1,000, or excuse me, one in 10,000. Mm -hmm. And now we're looking at numbers as one in 68. Well, okay. that's, a, that's a very big jump. Now, doctor, we've come to the end of our time. So just give us your final thoughts and also tell us how we can keep up with your work. Well, um, there is a, a website that features a lot of my work on CDC malfeasance. Uh, that website is called a shot of truth.org. And that's the uh, best resource to, uh, to get the most current information. Uh, there's lots of things coming. I, I'm reviewing uh, documents all the time. So this is really just the tip of the iceberg. Um, and I would, I would say, you know, to anybody, if the government tells you that there's that that is it's there's something that you should put in your body, doubt it. Okay, <laughs> it is your body, and it is it is not your responsibility to be a part of this grand experiment. If you don't feel like something's safe to put in your body, don't do it. Simple as that. Simple as that, Dr. Brian Hooker. We definitely look forward to more reports. If you have uh, more information, please let us know. And thank you for your time, sir. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate being on your show.